Hello, I am Daur Hunski. I am Chief Creative Officer at Crow Team, and I will tell you a story how creating a vertical slice saved Series M. Back in the days, the 90s in Croatia were a little bit uh, less exciting than today, but still there was few very enthusiastic people trying to make their first games. Uh, there were like three or four companies in their garages trying to make games. Just, you know, pure passion and that was um, uh, not, not much more than that. We really believed that we can deliver something very special. When we decided to make a first-person shooter game, we needed an engine to run it. But engines in those days were pretty expensive. I think it was like more of like $1 million plus. And of course, we couldn't, <laughs> couldn't afford an engine of $1,000 probably. Actually, we had no choice but to make ourselves our, our own engine. Our goal was to make a 2D engine that would um, be able to run a game like a Wolfenstein. It had no view up and down look, just um, a feeling of a first person perspective and you can move around and we did that. But in the meantime, Duke Nukem came and uh, it had uh, up and down uh, perspective and you can, you can look a little bit up and down. And we had to switch that and we added that uh, to the engine. Then, of course, Quake came and that, that was unbelievable, complete 3D. And we knew that we wouldn't be able to deliver a game that doesn't have 3D and the end of the game was not near uh, on the end of the horizon. So we understand that we still need to, to step once again and do the complete uh, 3D game. And then, of course, accelerators came and we need to switch from the software version of 3D into the accelerated one. During the development of Series M1, uh, the most common processor was probably the Pentium 1 or even Pentium 2 maybe. We optimized the engines so that it could run on low-end machines too. We know that we need to step up. We needed to do something very special. It was complete engine with editors, with uh, physics, with uh, complete 3D, with, uh, to support a huge number of enemies because that was our goal, uh, to have the game that is like open, wide spaces, something very special and new. Games at that time actually had something like few enemies actually on the screen and probably max to up to 10, but we aimed for 10, 10 times more. Actually, we, we aimed to, to reach 100 enemies at the screen at once. And uh, when you add to that the amount of projectiles that, that those enemies fire and that you have to fire in a really rapid rate to be able to <laughs> destroy all of them, and that was like really, really challenging for us to, to achieve technically. To, to gain what uh, we want to achieve in the game, that's huge environments and, uh, and a huge number of enemies, we had to deliver something that wasn't actually uh, seen anywhere, and that's a really large uh, scope for the, for the environments. That means that you, your visibility, you, you would be able to see something like maybe even uh, several hundreds of meters, even one kilometer ahead. The first implementation didn't have a good enough performances, so we had to invent some systems that would uh, enable us to run uh, hundreds, actually hundreds of enemies at the same time with them shooting projectiles which are really fast and you know like on, on computers they are really really not that good at, at those times. So we invented this caching ahead system where one projectile or moving object would actually cache uh, for, I don't know, maybe three, four seconds ahead, everything that it could collide. And until nothing changed during those three, four seconds, it wouldn't have to, uh, to test again uh, against the uh, environment for collision. To speed up uh, the, the collision, we, we were not able to use the real geometry of, of cubes for collision, but we approximated them with several spheres. On one side, that speed up uh, immensely our, our collision tests because actually test with the cube is really, really easy one. And the second gain that we got is that we could have a multi-directional gravity, so characters would be able to walk on ceilings on, um, inside the spheres. So we had several types of gravity and we actually put that into the game uh, as a secret places, locations, and that was really, really awesome. We started with building a complete game that was unpolished but had uh, like 40 levels and we packed that up with the menus, nice menus and everything into one um, pitchable, well we thought it was a pitchable exe 
that we recorded and uh, actually printed out very nice design game design document that would that explains all the enemies all the items weapons locations story everything we selected something like maybe 20 30 publishers and we pitched that demo along with uh, this game design document to all of them we only had uh, answers from two two of them so 28 didn't answer at all and two answers came and both of them said no We didn't have too much uh, options on our table, so we want to do our last try to make this happen. We had no, no funding at all, so we were like students working in our garages, fighting with our, our parents because they didn't understand what we want to, to do with this. But still we, want, we knew that we have something special there, okay? And to, we tried to think and we, we discuss many, many times what to do now, how to uh, to deliver to others what we had in, in, inside our brains, in our minds, right? So we created, we decided that we will make one, let's call it vertical slice, one technology test demo that would feature, you know, really polished one level, but really, really polished level from the beginning to the end. We took one of the, our beloved levels, the Karnak level that is inspired by the really, really beautiful complex of temples in Egypt and we planned to have several pit, pitfalls and levels, some introductions of the enemies. We, we really uh, give our best to, to polish everything in the game. Animations, sounds, weapon sounds, feeling of running, everything. It was like a demo that would be played like from one hour to one and a half hours. It's a complete game compressed down to one level. We uploaded it onto the internet, but the real uh, success of the demo was uh, because uh, the site Old Man Mary picked it up and gave it a first positive review ever because they always gave negative reviews. The Old Man Mary was a very famous uh, site. It was run by two guys, uh, Chet and Eric, and those guys later were employed by Valve and they were writers of uh, Portal, Half-Life 2, and uh, Left 4 Dead games. Guys from the Old Man Mari uh, actually had this uh, rating system where they would take a game and measure how long does it take for a player to reach the first uh, crate or a barrel in a game. It was a way to, for, for the guys to show how unimaginative the level design in the other games. So they picked up our demo and uh, actually they weren't, there weren't any uh, crates in the game, so they gave us a, a fantastic and first positive ever review probably. And that put a lot of spotlight onto our game and I think at the end that made a big difference. It was really heavily downloaded from, from many people. It was like more than a million dollars. It was the download of the summer back in the days and it was really, really successful. We think that this uh, vertical slice or making a demo that would um, represent the game is actually a very, very good way uh, to start making a, a new game. So we did that for Series M3. We had this uh, level called Phile. Uh, it is an island on the River Nile where we actually created the first gameplay when we uh, created Talos. We had a spe special level that was actually, um, we, we published it, uh, we gave it out for free so that people can test and see what the Talos is all about. And we were pretty confident that they will like that and actually that happened. And I think this is pretty fair uh, for the developers to give um, game in hands of the gamers to try out before they buy. So, yeah, well, it is not a common these days, but I really think that's fair and we will I think we will stick to that decision in the future.